Hi, thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to demonstrate a quick way to make um, a wreath for the holiday. This I'm using poncettas, uh, and it's for the Christmas a Christmas wreath. But you can adapt this for Easter or Thanksgiving, any other holiday. You need a wreath. You can use a permanent wreath or this one. I need it flexible for what I need it for. And so you can also use um, the garland to make a wreath also. You need some flowers. So I have a, you only need one. Depends on how large they are. This one has five. So you need, um, you need as many flowers as needed for, um, you have to gather as many flowers uh, as needed for the wreath to kind of make it full. I want to make this plain. So I'm going to use mostly wreath, uh, flowers rather some type of ribbon and this one has the wire on it which makes it really easy with this method you can either um since all of these have wire in it you can just use the wire and it will keep everything stable or you can use a glue gun so the glue gun is um optional some gel pens depends on what color you need and uh, wire cutters or scissors this ribbon is really thin, but it has a wire in the inside, so you can cut this with scissors. This will probably be, be just enough for the wreath that I'm using. So you want to keep the leaves on it, cut it down a ways. You're going to use all of the wire, well, the majority of the wire that comes on, on this little thing. This you don't need, so you can throw that away paper off. I'm going to show you, um, I cut enough for this project, but when it's on, what you want to do is have one end, and I want this to look a little fuller than this, so I'm going to use two circles. These circles need to overlap because you can twist these together and not need any glue. So I cut the pre-cut these now, what I do is, I have the first circle here, and I take this and bring it up through, either up through or down, it doesn't matter. What you want to do is cause it to, you don't want it to be laying on top, because then it separates, that you don't want. So by sort of twisting it, almost knotting it there, it remains as one piece and then when you come to this top part you can take one under one over this one I took up underneath bent it up and then this piece I'm going to place it on there I'm going to twist it around the two loose ends then I'm going to twist it back Flip this over and then twist it again. When you do that, the wreath becomes stable. It's one piece. You, as you can see, they're not sitting directly on top of each other, which is fine because it makes it look fuller. These are some little plastic pieces, so they don't bend. How you get them is just how they are going to be. But by... Um, Twisting them like this or interlocking them like this, lacing them together, it makes it look fuller. Now the placement of these is going to, it's not going to be directly opposite. If you want it directly opposite one another, then you need to have an uh, equal number of flowers. I have a hot glue gun here. And what I do, you don't have to, but I do because these are going to be out in the weather. Pop all the heads off. And you're going to glue them down into these heads. I should have did this a little earlier, but I really wanted you to see. This is a low temp glue gun. I put a bead of glue on there, and then I just kind of roll the excess onto this piece, and then stick it, insert it where it belongs. And I'll do each one like that. 
This is going to be outside. Sometimes these little um, flower heads have a tendency to come off. And I didn't want that to happen. One, because it would ruin the way the wreath looks. And two, because where I'm placing these, I will not be able to go back every so often and check on them. Very little glue is needed. So I will set that to the side. And I know where the, this is where I twisted them together. So I'm going to like go off to the side of it. I'm not really going to go on directly on to it. I'll start with one of the other ones. The glue is cooled already. Pushing the leaf up towards the flower, the base of the flower. I'm going to just twist this around this little garland piece. Hold this part, hold the head of the flower steady. Twist this around and around again. It's permanent. And so I'm going to continue around offsetting them slightly it only takes a few minutes you, you want to kind of have like equal space in between them I'm going to come back this excess can be cut off this excess piece of uh, wire can be cut off if you like it's not going I don't think it's going to matter much and this is just placement. You don't have to twist these all the way on as tightly as you really want them because you can come back later and tighten it up. So the initial placement, you just kind of look to make sure you got them where you want them. And I always tend to put that first one too far apart. This one, too far apart. Kind of loose so I can either undo it a little and move it down and then tighten it back up kind of keeps the basic shape when you're moving it sometimes it will tend to warp the shape but for the most part it's round it's going to lay flat now I'm going to add the ribbon and all this all I'm doing with this is just looping it um, between the flowers. Now, it, it depends on you how you want this. This little spool was nine feet, it says, and it's just long enough to do two wreaths. these two pieces now with this I can because it's wire I can twist this together and it's going to keep we're not going to leave that up there though we're going to take it towards the back now at this point you can either glue gun it on or you can Remember that wire that's left from the flower? I'm going to untwist it slightly and put this underneath it. And that will cause the workings of it to stay towards the back. This one. I'm just letting it, I'm, I put a little more ribbon on this one. So as you see, the ribbon is sitting up. But this is all wire, so you can twist and turn these flower petals, the heads of the flower, to get them just like you like it. Now, this ribbon doesn't have to stay fluffed up like this. You can crimp it down a little if you like. It works really good when you're making bows. Now, to keep these stationary, 
the pieces of ribbon. You want to keep them stationary. Just flip it over and you can put little dots of glue on it to stick onto the wreath itself. Just tacking it, that's all you're doing. You're putting just enough on to tack it. And then if it was a pillar candle, you'd sit the pillar candle in there if you want them sitting up to make a display. As far as the, sorry, I wanted to unplug that. As far as the gel pens go, you can write on these if you like. That's not showing up so well. But it was a thought. You can probably write on it, paint on it with something. They don't show up as well on this. So you can use some fabric glue because this is fabric. And so you can write on it, personalize it, put the person's name, put Merry Christmas or whatever the holiday is. These will also work to hang. You can hang these up if you desire. Right where you um, twisted them together, I would recommend putting a hanger there something to hang it up on there or you can just hang it on the hooks if you want it to do one a larger one you do it the same way and you can use it um as a on the hanger for the door so with this one you see there's um on this one i have extra ribbon and on this one i didn't i kept it kind of quiet so one roll nine foot ribbon um there's enough on this uh, garland to make three. There's enough to make another one. So I could have made three of these. And but the ribbon itself is only nine feet, so it will only make um, two to make it like that. And there you have it, a quick and easy way. Remember, you don't have to have the glue if you don't want to. This one, I did not use glue on it at all. This is the back of it. Everything was just twisted on and used the wire to keep everything on it. And it, it's sturdy and it will hold up to the wind. Thank you for joining me.